In this video, I'm going to describe how to train a cell pose model to find a specific class of objects. This process is likely to be something you do infrequently, as many objects can be found with existing models, provided that the settings in the prediction panel are correct. And for this, I refer you to our training video describing object segmentation with cell pose models. Some things to consider before training a new model is that training is usually simplified by cloning and retraining an existing cell pose model, as opposed to training a new model from scratch. And also that cell pose is an instant segmentation model. And so training must involve teaching your model what each individual instance of your objects of interest look like. In other words, they need to be correctly separated from each other. I'm going to train a model that segments erythroblasts, a type of white blood cell an example of which can be seen in the centre of this image, surrounded by red blood cells. If I segment this image using the general objects model, all of the cells in the image are found, and correctly separated from their neighbours. So my task is to clone this model and train it to recognise only the erythroblasts that I'm interested in. To clone a model, open the Model Manager by clicking Manage Models in the AI drop-down on the Count Size ribbon. Select the model that you wish to clone and click the Clone button. In the dialog that opens, name the clone model, then click OK. Here I've checked the option to load the clone model in the training panel, which opens on the left. The Deep Learning Trainer is divided into five sections. Section 1 is used to load the model that you wish to train. As my erythroblast model is already loaded, I won't need this section. Section 2 is used to configure the appearance and class names of your training objects. Section 3 contains the tools to add regions of interest to training images. This step is very important if you don't want to label all of your objects of interest. If that's the case, the objects that you label must be inside a region of interest, and all of the unlabeled objects must be outside the region of interest. More on that later. Section 4 is where you label your objects of interest. I'll go through all of the possible methods shortly. And Section 5 is where training data is added to your model and training is started. Let's make a start adding training data. After configuring the appearance and class name of my training objects, I can begin adding labels. Each of the frames of the sequence of images I'm using as training data contains only a single erythroblast, so I'm not going to add a region of interest. There are three methods you can use to add training objects. Draw manually, segmentation, and predict with existing. I'll start with draw manually. You can select any of the labeling tools available in the training panel, of which my favorite is the brush tool and draw the shape that corresponds to the object of interest. With fill hole selected, I just need to draw the outline before clicking the validate button or clicking the return key. After enabling merge and edit, I can make adjustments to the shape I've added and then revalidate. As I'm happy with my training data, I can click the add button to add this data to my training data set. After clicking Add, the Add Labels dialog opens. Use this dialog to ensure that the correct source image is active to select the training channel and the optional seed channel. My images are colour, so the training channel could be red, green or blue components of the image, or the grey channel, which is a combination of all three. The optional seed channel can be used to add context to objects. For example, the fluorescent cells model was trained with a training channel that contains stained cells and a seed channel that contains stained nuclei, helping the model to find cells with nuclei. In my case, with my color images, there is no channel to add context, so I'll leave this optional channel set to none. After clicking Add, my training set updates to show that it now contains one image and one label. I can now change the frame of my training sequence and add a couple more training labels.
Let's now look at other methods of adding training labels, starting with predict with existing model. When selected, I can click on the prediction button to open the prediction panel. Here I click the load button and choose a model. I adjust the prediction settings and use the model to segment objects in my image. Notice that I have to adjust the diameter in order to segment the central erythrocyte. I can now delete all of the objects that are not erythrocytes. And add my training label. Similarly, when I select the segmentation option, I can choose to open either the threshold or smart segmentation panels. Here I'm selecting the smart segmentation panel. I build a recipe to find my erythrocyte and with the correct filtering options find just my erythrocyte and add the label to my training data. Please keep in mind that in most real situations your training data is likely to be much more complicated than mine, with many objects of interest per image, in which case using automated segmentation methods can save a lot of time compared to manual labeling. Now let's consider when to use a region of interest. This image contains four erythrocytes. If I label a single example, I could click the Add button and add this image and label to the training data. But by leaving the other three examples unlabeled, this would degrade my model. Including objects of interest as background is sending a decidedly mixed message to the model, making it difficult for the model to determine what the differences between objects of interest and background are. However, if I add a region of interest that contains only valid objects, Adding this data to the training set becomes a valid option. Now when I click the Add button, only the data within the region of interest, which is correctly labelled, will be used for training. Here, after removing the region of interest and labelling all the erythrocytes in my image, I'm clicking the Add button again. This time, because data from this image has already been added to the training set, I'm given the choice to either replace all of the training data with the current labels, or to append the current labels as additional data. The Append option would be the correct choice if I added an additional region of interest that added different training labels. However, in this case, I'm selecting the Replace All option. At this point, I think it's worth doing the first round of training. It may seem early to do so with a mere nine labels in my dataset. However, it's often worthwhile training early and often. This allows you to test your model. You can use your model to add more training data after correcting any errors that the model makes. And to avoid doing too much work adding labels to a model that may already have enough data. After clicking the Train button, the Train dialog is displayed. In this dialog, I can choose whether to train a size model. This is a second model dedicated to estimating the size of objects of interest in the prediction panel, and to set the number of epochs. An epoch occurs every time the model sees all of the training data. 
In my case, I'm going to keep the option selected to train the size model and use the default number of epochs for training 300. During training, ImagePro calculates the loss function after each epoch and displays this value in the deep learning output panel every 10 epochs and plots it in the training graph. The loss function is a measurement of the difference between the training objects and the objects predicted by the model. The lower the loss function, the more accurate the model is. The training is shown speeded up for the purposes of this video. The loss function we see being plotted is actually very low, showing that the model is already very good. But we can put that to the test when the training completes. Here I'm clicking the predict button in the training panel to open the newly trained model in the prediction panel and testing the model. The results are impressive as the model is clearly able to distinguish erythrocytes from red blood cells. The next step at this point is to open some new images that the model hasn't seen before, use the model to find objects of interest, make corrections and edits to the objects that the model finds, then add these corrected objects to the training data. Here I'm showing this speeded up for the benefit of this video. In this image, the model fails to find anything, so I manually label the pair of joined erythrocytes before adding the labels to the training data. After adding additional training data, a second round of training is done, this time of 150 epochs and again shown speeded up. Note that the loss increases after new training data is added, but quickly decreases as the training progresses. A further round of model testing can now be done. Here the pair of erythrocytes that couldn't be found after the first round of training are found after the second. Based on your testing after each round of training, you can decide if your model is ready or whether further training data and training is required. I'd like to finish this video by mentioning that you can follow the link in the training panel to access detailed documentation on model training. I'd also like to acknowledge the source of the training data which was used in this video. It was uploaded to Kaggle.com by Andrea Acevedo and colleagues. Here's the dataset's digital object identifier and a relevant reference. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact Media Cybernetics and we'll be happy to help you.